Well, turn with me to Acts. Thank you. Chapter 12. And I read. <clears throat> now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Are you a vex Christian? Has the enemy vexed you? Psalm said, my soul is vexed within me. Enemies work. To vex, not the whole church. Certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, which was a disgraceful way to die in the eyes of the Jews. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. That was what Simon was saying. And those were the days of the unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. And delivered him to four quaternions or four soldiers. Sixteen soldiers and four watches for each time. To keep him. Intending after the Passover to bring him forth to the people. Peter was therefore kept in prison. But prayer. Say that for me. But prayer. prayer. Say it again. But prayer. but prayer. And that's the word I wanted from you. Prayer. Prayer is the one thing that has kept this church. We started this church with four years of night after night after night going from house to house praying. And because this church has been founded on praying people and prayers... It's why it's still standing, and it's why I will continue to recommend we be a praying church. Can I hear amen? But prayer was made without ceasing of the church. And Pastor again said, it's, it has to be the whole body. This is a time where the church must get involved. Unto God, he prayed unto God for him. Directed up in heaven for a specific person. Prayed for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night. I want you to say that again. The same night, because it's important. The same night. Not the evening, not the morning. The same night. And that's where my topic is coming from. My topic is, God works the night shift. God works the night shift. The same night. And if you are in prison, and you are chained somewhere, today can be the same moment when God can come into your situation and set you free. Hallelujah. God works the night shift. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, <laughs> I, I just love this. This thing ministered to me so much. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. This man was well guarded. He was living in a gated community. You will see how that opens up automatically just now. And behold, this is so important. What prayer can do. When a praying church begins to call upon God, we'll see some results. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Secondly, a light shone in the prison. Thirdly, he smote Peter on the side. Fourthly, raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And I can hear the chains falling. <laughs> and his chains fell off from his hands. 
You know how many Christians' hands are changed? They don't give you a good handshake. Just give me it. They can't reach into their pockets to give to the Lord. <clears throat> Chained. But the chains fell off. And the angel said unto him, Dress yourself. Put on your sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast your garment about you and follow me. Follow me. And he went out and followed him and did not realize it was true which was done by the angel. But he thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate. Iron gate. Which led into the city. Ah, oh, here is the community. Which opened to them of its own accord. You know when you go to them gated communities, you press a button and the gate opens of its own accord. You think technology, you think they had something on the Bible. <laughs> we had automatic gates long time ago. Hallelujah. 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 Opened up its own accord. He went out, passed through one street, and then the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, nay, but now, now, now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Blessed is the man who could find a prayer meeting. At the midnight hour. And Peter knocked on the door of the gate. A damsel named Rhoda. Rhoda means rose. And when she knew Peter's voice. She opened not the gate for gladness. But ran and told how Peter stood before the gate. Now this is a praying church. okay? And they said unto her. Thou art mad. The verse before said she was glad. They're saying she's mad. Sometimes when you announce answers to prayer, sometimes when you give a good report, and, and some people say, Are you're mad. No, you're glad. So when you're glad, just be glad by yourself and let them think you're mad. <laughs> Hallelujah. They said unto her, you're mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, okay, okay, it's his angel. That, that's a praying church, you know. Who's praying for this man? I want you to get the point. They were praying for Peter all night long. Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Stunned. Which brings my theme. Astonished. Or stunned by prayers answers. God wants to astonish you. God wants to surprise you. God wants to answer your prayer in such a way. That you will not believe that you are seeing the answer right before you. But it takes a praying church. God works the night shift. Let's go on back and touch some thoughts. That uh, I would love for it to stay with you. Now by the time when Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. He killed James. I want you to know that nobody prayed for James. But they prayed for Peter. Watch this. James and John were brothers. Of the twelve apostles, James was the first to die, and John was the last to die. Two brothers. I don't understand how God does the thing, but we just have to trust. He knows what he's doing. What good was James in heaven? I don't know. I think he would be more profitable on earth. 
That's my argument with God. I'm ready to go to heaven anytime, Lord, but I don't think you need me up there now. I have some work here to do. So I'm convinced the Lord's going to keep me to do his work here and keep you too. 91 years, when I reach 91, brother, I hope to be preaching just like this. That's the grace and power of God. Answer to prayer. Hallelujah. So the enemy is stretching his hand. He's making an effort. He took his hands out of his pocket and he's stretching his hand to do what? To get the leadership of the church. If he strikes the leadership, he will scatter the sheep. And so the church must pray for the leaders. You want the church to continue victory after victory? Pray for your leaders. And let them not become vexed. Do you know how many Mondays I get vexed? I get vexed because people who could be in church were not in church. I get vexed because I hear foolish reasons why they couldn't make it. I always used to say that come 12 o'clock on a Sunday, it's the most supernatural moment in the church. Because everybody who was sick and couldn't come to church, they got healed and they're in the mall. You go in the mall after 12 o'clock and you see a lot of people you didn't see in church. Oh, the healing power of God on a Sunday morning is just amazing. So he killed James and he was going for, for Peter. Don't know why he left John. But he was going for Peter because Peter was the next most influential probably. So because it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to take Peter. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. None of us walks into prison and say, I want to be trapped. We're put there. The enemy will create a prison and keep you trapped. But what I'm glad about is that the enemy could never build a big prison or a strong enough prison to keep a praying child in. Because prayer will burst the walls of any prison. Prayer will destroy whatever Satan is trying to do to you. And so, Peter was kept in prison. But prayer. Say that with me. But prayer. Now, I have to ask you. To understand that praying is not chanting a few words. The kind of prayer we need is deep, deep from the heart. Prayer that rises up in faith and touches the very throne room of God. Faith that moves the hand of God. You see, prayer is the only weapon that we have and is very seldomly used properly. I don't know how many guns you have in your house. I, I, I like guns. I want you to know that. But I don't carry. I stopped carrying on my person seven years ago. Because the Lord told me that ain't going to help you. Because you would have it in your pocket and somebody come and put one in your back. What you going to do? And so I realized that my help comes from the Lord. And the Lord will protect me wherever Satan tries to trap me. I have to keep my faith and my eyes fixed on Jesus Christ alone and expect the power of his divine protection to be around me at all times. And in your home and in your family. Hallelujah. He was kept in prison. Prayer was made. Without ceasing by the church unto God for him. Detailed instruction. And when Herod would have brought him out. For the same night. The same night. Now, what, what, what amused, not amuses me, but it really makes me think. Here's this Peter going to be executed tomorrow morning first thing. His hands are chained and this man didn't have the slightest worry about tomorrow. He was so sound asleep 
that the angel had to kick him. Wake him up. Then hold him by the hand and pick him up. And tell him, put on your clothes, get dressed. Peter was so comfortable, he took off everything he had. And was sleeping in the grace and in the arms of Jehovah, whom he knew would take care of him. And like Daniel, he would say, the Lord of sent his angel to deliver me. Let me tell you something. Prayer uh, releases angelic activity. When the church begins to pray, angels are in this building right now. I will guarantee you that. According to Paul said, uh, angels behold our order uh, in the presence of God. Oh, I've seen them many times. As a matter of fact, yesterday, we had a Foursquare conference here. And one of the leaders came to me and said, Pastor, what have you done to this place? This place is looking so beautiful. This place is looking so new. Everything in this, in this auditorium here is looking so beautiful. I said, bro, we ain't touched nothing in here for 22 years. It must be the glory of God. People come here and they see what you can't see because you come every time. But there's something happening here that I can only say in answer to prayer. The glory of God is here and the angels of the Lord is here. Expect your miracle from angelic hands today in Jesus' name. It was night. The prison was dark. When the angel came, a light shone in the prison. May God shine his light. In your darkness. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So that you can see. Yes, what to do. Yes, Lord. Yes. And so the church. Prayed. And God answered. The method of deliverance was prayer. And always will be prayer. And still is prayer today. And prayer was made by the united force. Called the church. And the Lord heard their prayer. And acted. Same night. When Peter was sleeping. Between two soldiers. Bound with chains. Picture the man of God. Or any modern day believer who. Has a calling on the life. This is what the enemy will do. Chain your hands. Keep you in a dark cell. Put demons to watch over you. I am telling you this. You may not know. But demons have been assigned. To disrupt your life. Demons are hanging around your house. And in the night when you hear strange things, it's no ghosts. It's not jumbie. It's demons. Trying to rattle the roof for nothing to wake you up. Thing buzzing by your ears. You slap your ears. There's no mosquito. Demons are assigned to keep you chained. To keep you in a dark place. So you can't see what's going on. But when the angels of the Lord come. Light shines. You will see the move of the enemy. And then you will be able to get dressed. Like a real soldier. You see you, you can't put on your pajamas. These are not days for pajama saints. You got to keep your armor on. Dress up Peter. We're going out somewhere. God works the night shift. And your night might be dark and gloomy. And tomorrow you might be facing a threat. Tomorrow you may have to go to court. Tomorrow you may have to pay a bill. Tomorrow something negative is waiting to happen to you. But I am saying God works the night shift. And before tomorrow morning a miracle can happen to you. God can release angelic forces to come and turn things around. Prayer changes things. And the angel came, shunned the light. Saying, get up quickly. Move it. And as soon as he rose up, the chains fell off. And we love that song. I hear chains falling. I hear chains breaking. I am hearing some of your chains falling right now. Can you hear them? Can you do this? Can you just do this? 
Just shake your hands. And may the Lord drop those chains off your hands that stop you from bringing them together. Those hands that can rest on somebody's shoulder and say a word of prayer. Those hands that can embrace somebody who's going through their sad moment and give them some kind of comfort. May God set our hands free. Give me a wave if you think your hand is free. If you're with me, if you're not sleeping, give me a wave. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, everybody's waving. Glory to God. His chains fell off. I hope that by the end of this service, you will be chain free. So they walked out. Went to the iron gate, opened automatically. Then Peter realized it was truly an angel. Point is, sometimes God is working and we don't recognize it. We're doing things, we're moving, we're going through. But we don't realize that is the actual time that the Lord is working. And so you might be discouraged. Peter didn't know what was going on. But God is working the night shift. And he's going to work for you. And he's going to surprise you tomorrow morning. Yeah. I'm almost done. So he went to the praying church. There's a lot I can say here, but... Um, when the enemy tries... The Bible says they were guarded. They were guarded praying. Verse 12. Went to the house. Of Mary. Where many were guarded together praying. This is the point I want to make. When the enemy tries to scatter us by vexing us. The answer is that we should be gathered together and pray together as one body, one force, one army. What the devil tried to scatter, we must unite. When the enemy tried to separate us, we must break that mentality and say, No, I am coming to church. I will not let anything keep me back from a Wednesday night. We've got to come together. One cord is easily broken, but three is difficult. One will chase a thousand, but two will put 10,000 to flight. Come on, church. Get here on a Wednesday night and stop watching TV. I will push prayer meeting more than any other meeting in this church. I want more prayer meeting. We have one sister that come every Tuesday here. At 12 o'clock and pray. The church is open if you have nothing to do today. Come in the sanctuary and pray. I would like the prayer meeting to be the biggest number in the church. Because prayer still moves the hand of God. And the more people we have praying is the more miracles we will be seeing. I believe in prayer. I, I have been a man of prayer. From the time I got saved, I knew what fasting and praying was. And I prayed and fast. And I can't boast, but for the first two years, I fasted every single day. I broke the fast in the evening. But I fasted. I was young and strong. For two years, I fasted and preached and prayed as a young man. It what gave me my foundation. Any man's life is founded in prayer will never fall. And any church whose foundation is in prayer will never fail. I encourage you to pray. Not just say prayers. Intercede. Go down on your knees if you can bend. Now if you can't, sit up. Lie down on your bed. Walk around the room. But pray! But prayer was made! Make that prayer. If the only talent you have is to pray, don't bury it. Don't bury it. 
God will hold you accountable because God has given every one of us something spiritual, something supernatural. And I would want to say he has given every one of us the opportunity to pray. May you take it and make it. Your life will be better. Your children will be better. Your family will be better. Things will get better on your job. In your neighborhood, your street will be safe because you have called upon God. Can you say amen? So, some things the enemy will try to scatter, those things we will try to gather. So Peter knocked on the door. Knock, knock. Who's there? Peter? Peter who? Peter the pumpkin eater? No? This girl, this young lady, what is interesting, we had young people in that prayer meeting. You hear what I'm saying? She was a young damsel, meaning she was under 20, 21. She was a teenager, but she loved to go to the door and greet people. She was a greeter. I love to see some young people by that door. Glad. She was so glad to see people. I want you at the door to be glad to see people coming in. Don't frown when you see them. Oh, where have you been so long? No, 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 no. That's not the, uh, the way out of the door. Hey, I'm so delighted to see you today. Welcome to the house of God. Come on, be positive as a greeter. She was so happy, she forgot to open the door. And she ran inside because there was another door. How it was built, there was a wall with a door, a courtyard, and then the house had another door. She ran inside. Now, this is a praying church. Believing God for a miracle. <laughs> so. She said, hey guys, elders, elders. Peter is at the door. Young girl. You're mad. Peter is in prison. No, no, no. I know Peter's voice. I have heard him preach so many times. It is Peter. Hallelujah. Young lady, relax. It's his angel. But Peter kept knocking. <laughs> when the door won't open, you keep on knocking. Jesus guaranteed that. Knock! And it shall be open. And he, he heard that teaching from Jesus. So he kept on knocking. And the problem is with this. Is that some people and some churches. Have the answer knocking at their door. And they can't recognize it. God will bring the answer right in front of your door. In front of the church's door. But we're praying. We're praying for the answer that's already here. You see, not, not that the, this, I'm finishing with this. Not that the church wasn't believing God or didn't have faith. No, you can't accuse them of that. What happened was they couldn't believe that God would act so quickly. Sometimes God delays and they know that. But so quickly God said, listen guys, before you call upon me, I will hear you and I will answer you. They were astonished, surprised by the quickness of how God moved. He works the night shift so that your morning will be full of dancing and full of glory. Hallelujah. God works the night shift. And in the morning, you'll be surprised at how quickly God can turn a situation around. How quickly you can move from execution to exaltation. How quickly you can move from darkness into light. How quickly you can move from being in prison to a free man. How quickly the chains can fall off. God is a quick God. Oh, he's a present help. He is 
a present help. He is a present help in the time of need. God wants to touch you now. Now, now. You believe that? Stand to your feet. God wants to bring deliverance to your situation. Oh, he works. He's working and he's working on your behalf. Tomorrow, even before you go to bed tonight, something supernatural. It's possible. It's the word. I gave you the word. I showed you that he did it and he can do it again. And we had a wonderful prayer time today and you just keep on praying. I ask you for nothing but prayer. I am not asking you for money or contribution because when you pray, God will speak to you and tell you what to do. I am not worried about your behavior because once you are praying and connected to heaven, heaven will shine light in your prison and tell you what to do. Instruction upon instruction from the angel. Get up, put on your sandals. You got to tell a big man, put on your sandals. But fine points were given. So I'm not, I'm not going to ask you for anything but prayer. If we have a praying church, we are unstoppable. You, you, you believe the word of the Lord? I hear chains falling. Uh, you have a song to play there for me, buddy? I want you to concentrate on the word. I want you to hold on to the word. Something in this word must belong to you. Some part of this word must reach you somewhere in your heart. I preach a smorgasbord sermon every time so that everybody can get something. Listen to the words. And pray this for you. I pray for your healing. The circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside will flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray. Every promise you spend. 
today. The circumstances will change. The circumstances will change. I pray for the I pray for the breakthrough. Hallelujah. Will Jesus. Set me free. Shine your light. Let the chains fall off. I believe in miracles in a very quick way. In Jesus' name. Who's coming up? Hallelujah.